In this video, I'll walk you through the Code Canvas extension, what it is, how it works, and how you can use it to get the most out of your code base. We'll explore in depth how each feature helps you visualize your project, understand how everything connects, and navigate your code faster and more intuitively. First, let's have a look at how to open the canvas. We can do so from the command palette by typing open code canvas or by clicking this button here. Alternatively, if the canvas is closed, you can right click a file or folder and click open in code canvas. This is going to open the uh, canvas as well as start loading the files. By default, the files and folders are arranged using the hybrid layout algorithm. This arranges the files in each folder based on their dependencies and it also arranges the folders based on dependencies of the files inside the folders to other files or folders outside of the folder. Files with outgoing dependencies are placed to the right of the files where they are imported. Same goes for the folders. Now there might be situations where we have circular dependencies or some imports are misplaced, like in this case here. The algorithm is going to try and do its best to figure out a good placement for the files, but generally this means that there's some uh, issues with the folder structure. So in this case, for example, this utils uh, should have been placed somewhere in here, but it's importing something from this file. So it might be a good idea to refactor this a bit to figure out what's going on there, but not now. There are three main layout algorithms. This one is the hybrid one. We have the dependencies, which sorts files and folders based on dependencies. So if we turn off the folders here by pressing L, uh, we can see that uh, it's doing kind of the same thing, but it's ignoring the folder structure. And we have the folders layout algorithm, which sorts the files based on folders, ignoring their dependencies. You can switch between these algorithms here or by pressing shift one, two, or three. There are a lot of options for the file layout. A lot of them are quite self-explanatory, but I would want to go over this one here, rank breaking. So this one is available for the hybrid or dependencies. So what uh, rank breaking does, if we have a look here, uh, by default, because files are generally tall when they're arranged in this sort of tree shape, if they had no height, the aspect ratio would be quite square fitting nicely on the screen. But because the nodes in this graph representation are the actual files with the code in them, which are tall and narrow, then the entire graph becomes tall and narrow. So rank breaking allows you to break the ranks of the graph so that nodes that are imported, let's say this node imports all of these ones here. Rank breaking allows you to take all of these and arrange them in a more square format or control the aspect ratio here. Now the layout fits uh, much nicely on the screen so we can get a better idea of the entire structure of our code base. And there are a lot of other uh, features here which are quite self-explanatory or you can check the info here for uh, more details on what they do, but it's mostly alignment, direction, and spacing between files or folders. In the canvas visualization panel, we can toggle different visualization options on the canvas. So for example, we can toggle folder names on or off. We can toggle showing the entire folders or their backgrounds. Backgrounds are displayed when zooming out. So as you zoom in there, the folder backgrounds become less opaque. As you zoom out, they become more opaque so that you can get a better idea of the folder structure when there are a lot of nested folders. There are shortcuts for all of these, which you can see here in the help panel or by pressing command slash brings up the shortcuts and you can see these view and display ones are the ones for this panel here. And there's shortcuts for most of the things that you can do in the canvas. Now this section here up top is for edge visualization options. So the depth option phase the opacity of the edges based on their folder depth. So imports within the same folder appear stronger while imports from other folders are faded out based on the distance between the export and the import, unless selected, of course, when they're being highlighted. For the dependency edge style, you can change between Bezier straight or stepped. Bezier is the best for highlighting where the file connects to but it can have a pretty big impact on performance when a lot of edges are being displayed at once. 
So what I like to do is keep this one to straight and only the selected nodes will have the Bezier selected so that when we select the nodes, the edges would automatically turn into Bezier curves so we can see where they're connected while still keeping a pretty good uh, performance for, on the canvas when we have a lot of edges displayed. And finally, the token edge style is the style of the edges for the selected token. So when we select a function or a variable, we can see we have these lines that show us where in the code base these tokens are being used, whether it's in the same file or in other files. So this controls the styling of these lines. For the file names, they are automatically scaled up when you select the files. The connected files to the selected files also have their names scaled up. So if I select a file, the files that are connected to it will have their names scaled up. If you click the scale all button, it's going to scale all of the names. This one scales only the selected ones. This uh, symbol option here is for displaying symbol outlines. This is a visualization of the outline for a file. So this thing that you see here with all of the symbols in the file, you get a visual representation of this. At the moment, the main purpose of this is to have some visual indication of the code while zoomed out without showing the actual code, which would be very taxing on performance. The zoom level at which the transition happens between code and symbols and then uh, just file backgrounds can be controlled from this panel here by pressing V. You can see the zoom is being shown on this line here and this controls where the symbols appear and where the code appears. So I think this one here is pretty good like this. And while we're on this panel, if we turn on the minimap, there's a button here which you can press or you can press F to toggle between these two zoom levels. So F would go, uh, would, would toggle between these two uh, zoom levels that you select here. When we press F, the zoom happens where your mouse position is. So if we uh, hover over this file and press F, it's going to zoom in there. Hover over this file, it's going to zoom in there. Just a easier way to navigate around the canvas. In the file actions, we have a few options for the files. A refresh or Shift R refreshes all of the files on the canvas. Sometimes if you have your canvas uh, closed and you do some changes to the files, they might not be updated. By default, they are, uh, or the changes are being picked up automatically. So if I make a change to this file and save it, you're going to see it's automatically reflected on the canvas. The auto layout kicked in because the file width changed uh, as well as the file height. But as you can see, uh, the change is automatically reflected on the canvas. If the canvas is closed, this doesn't happen. So this refresh button just makes sure that all of the files on the canvas are up to date with what the actual files in the code are. Clear, we remove all of them. Uh, you can also remove individual files by selecting them and pressing backspace, or you can uh, remove them by pressing con command X or control X. When you have a very large file open, like for example, if I open the package lock, the file is collapsed by default and you can expand it either by clicking this button or expand all large, which will expand all of the large files. This might cause performance issues if you have a lot of files open. So that's why by default, uh, they're not being shown. Um, clear tokens. So when we have a token selected, it's going to show us its connections throughout the code base or within the file that it's being used. Clear tokens just removes all of this and the shortcut is Shift C. Again, you can see all of the shortcuts in here by pressing command slash or by clicking this help button. References is also related to tokens. So if we click on a token like this function here. If we uh, toggle this on or press R, we can see the references of this token throughout the code base. So we can see all of the files. We can click on them to open them. We can see their definitions and implementations. If it's a function, we can also see the incoming calls and outgoing calls. Again, this panel can be toggled by pressing R or by clicking this button here. These two options, File Watcher and Auto Open Change, allows for files to be automatically open on the canvas when there are changes in them and for the changes to be automatically picked up when they happen. Next up, we have the diff options. So as you saw, we have this split diff view, 
We also have the unified div view. So if we delete this line and maybe make a change to this one. So this just changes between the regular editor view, like we see in VS Code, then the unified or split diff views. Collapse unchanged lines allows us to collapse and we can control the number of context lines around the changed ones. This is also very useful when we have a lot of files open as it allows us to collapse all of them and we can get a better idea of the structure of our code base in that area. You can do this by pressing C and it works for only the selected files if you have files selected or for all the files if you don't have any files selected. Open all change files will open all of the files that have changes in the current workspace. Another way to open files is from the node toolbar. So as you can see, if we select a file, there's a toolbar that's being displayed here. This left arrow opens all of the files where this file is being imported into. And this right arrow opens all of the files that are being imported in this file. You can also option click on the arrow and open the files individually, or you can click on the arrow to open all of them at once. There is also a import handle here. So next to every import, there's a circle which you can drag out to open the respective file. One more thing I forgot to mention is if you have a multi-line variable or a function selected, the function body will be highlighted. And when you zoom out, there's this label. It lets you get a bit of a better understanding of the uh, file structure and relationships between different parts of the files. If you have a file selected and you press backslash, it's going to select all of the files within that folder. If you press backslash again, it's going to select all of the files within the upper folder and so on until you have them all selected. This is useful when you want to select a folder and move it around, maybe apply a different layout algorithm to that folder. And finally, we have two more panels here. There's the regex styling. This one lets you change the styling of files and folders based on regex patterns. So as you can see, this one selects all of the TypeScript files, makes them blue. All of the uh, TSX files makes them purple. Uh, for hooks here, we got some yellow outlines. And you can pretty much do uh, whatever you want in here. You can control whether the regex pattern applies only to the file name or to the entire file path. And you can also control what is being styled, where it's the uh, file name, the background, or the stroke. You can also control uh, whether to style the incoming and outgoing edges. If you press G to turn on the file backgrounds, you can also see uh, these can be styled as well with these options. And finally, there's the canvas configuration, which lets you uh, save different canvas configurations. Uh, like for example, this one here, we can save it. And uh, let's say we've done some changes, we can uh, come back and load that one. Now it looks like this is a different one. Uh, yeah, this one. A pressing shift F also would fit the entire canvas to view. If you have a selection, shift F will fit only the selection. This works if you have one or more files selected. So if you have two, it's going to fit the files. If you have just one, still going to fit the entire canvas. Another thing I forgot to mention that is quite important actually is you can option click or alt click on a file to open it in a tab to the right. This is very useful when you're trying to navigate a certain part of the code base and you want to see the structure of the uh, feature here, but you also want to uh, have a look at code in the files. So you can uh, very quickly do that by opening them like this. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. And you can download the extension on the VS Code Marketplace by typing Code Canvas app. Uh, if you're using cursor or any other IDE, you're going to have to scroll a little bit to find it. I'm not sure why it shows up much lower down the list in the cursor marketplace but if you type code canvas app the vs code marketplace should have it as the first one here if you have any questions about the extension you can join the discord you can find the link here there is also going to be a link in the video description if you want to follow the development of the extension you can follow me on twitter thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one